Yeah. So yesterday, Gary Tonin proposed this question on, on Instagram, and I, I thought it was so fascinating, especially the responses. And that same day, my, my friend Nils, also known as Captain Krav Maga, on my YouTube channel, sent me a, a list of um, animals that people, like a study people, I'm stuttering a lot today. There was a, a study some scientists did, apparently they had a lot of downtime, what animals most people believe that they could beat in a fight, right? And House Cat was kind of at the bottom. But Gary Tonin is proposing this idea that nine times out of ten, the average guy would lose a fight to a wild house cat. And so I start reading the comments, and everyone's like, no, Gary, you're, you're wrong. House cats are wimpy. I'm, I'm a big, strong man. And Gary says, all right, how do you beat that cat? And the guys spell out, like, oh, I would just grab it and, and smash it or wring its neck or something. And Gary asks, like, okay, how, how are you going to grab the cat? And, and these guys, it gives them some pause. And I start thinking about this. Well, cats are incredibly fast, especially over short distances. House cats are way faster than humans. And if you try to catch a cat that doesn't want to be caught, that's a very difficult thing. Man, I had a bunch of pet cats when I was a kid. And um, it was my job. My mother would always uh, task me with the arduous task of throwing all the cats outside from time to time and man, catching those things when they don't want to be caught is difficult. And if they want to fight you, if they stick out their claws and their teeth, as well as, you know, just running away from you and hiding and, and, um, and becoming difficult to catch, that becomes, that just compounds the problem. And I started thinking about this more and more. Okay. So you have an animal as small as a 12 pound house cat that has these claws and these teeth and this, this superhuman agility, that's far beyond what, what any any human can have and they can they can jump like 10 feet in the air very quickly and uh, If if they don't want you to catch them, you won't catch them If they don't want you to touch them, you won't touch them. So why am I bringing this up? It's it's very similar to the subject. We're just talking about like uh, if you want to use the dirty moves You have to be able to actually get to the other guy first. You've got to be able to touch him, right? You've got to be able to control them and the same thing with the cat. It's easy to imagine controlling a docile, friendly cat that sits on your lap and purrs, right? But if you've ever had experience with a feral cat that doesn't like you, and uh, maybe a rabid animal that wants to scratch and bite you, um, you quickly learn that winning a fight isn't about killing the other person. It's about being the one who who forces the other one to back down and submit. And if this, this wild animal can, um, you know, rapid fire machine gun claw you and then get in and out very quickly to the point where you decide it's not worth it anymore, it has just won that fight. You know, that's, that's deep. That's deep because, you know, I, I, my first thought is that, okay, I would have to wait until the cat jumps on me and attacks me I'd have to grab, and, and then it, it would jump on me, it would probably catch me in the face, and I would yank it off, hold it super tight, and then from there I would, like, make, I guess, you know, either try to snap its neck or, or, or um, you know, like, or smash it against the wall. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. like, if, if a cat... Peter is officially your enemy now, my friend. <laughs> the what? Peter is, is now against you, my friend. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you said the internet, because, and then I just thought of uh, you know there was a there was a Netflix special, a Netflix Netflix series. It was called "Don't F with Cats." Yeah, oh, and it was regarding. Yeah, you never heard of it? No, I haven't. Okay, it's regarding this serial killer uh, in in Montreal. Actually, this is where um, he, he 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 did a lot of murdering and all that. I think he murdered like a couple of people. But, anyways, it, essentially what he did is that he got attention from people by torturing cats and he was filming it and he posted it on the internet and because of that he got um he he, he got his so-called claim to fame because he was you know obviously a psychopath serial killer so he wanted to be caught yeah. he wanted to be known and his way about it was uh you know torturing cats that's how he started oh, out he, he was terrible. posting videos periodically yeah of uh don't watch it it's it's a, it's a terrible like it's just yeah. not a good thing to put in your psyche you know like watching like 10 episodes of this crap? Nah, don't do it. But 
uh, all that to say that when you said um, that's what I thought you said. I thought you said that like, oh, now the internet is 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 your enemy because no, Peter, the just... people, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. Oh, okay, yeah, but this is like you know, uh, you know, just yeah, it's hypothetical. I, I don't hypothetical. Just, <laughs> just joking. Um, man. But yeah, man. I mean, think about it. Like, um, think about a lion for a minute. You know, the lion, the king of the jungle. Not really. They they live in the savanna. They live in open grasslands, not the jungle. Um, but why do we even say lions are the king of the jungle? Anyway, what do lions eat? We think of lions eating zebras and gazelles, and yeah, they do. But when they can't find one, what do they eat? Because lions often spend long periods of time without having anything to eat, and they, they walk around in like a near starvation state a lot, especially mm -hmm. the lions who live solo without the pride as, as a support system. So the solo lions, they can't take down a big animal by themselves. And so what they end up eating a lot of the times is a porcupine, those African porcupines. And this is really interesting, especially if you watch a video of lions hunting porcupines because it is like their last resort. And the lion, before it hunts the porcupine, it stares at it for about 30 minutes. It just sits there and stares, thinking, how hungry am I again? Do I really want to do this? Oh, this is going to hurt. This is going to suck. And you see this look on the lion's face of, I don't want to do this, but I have no other options. I am so hungry. I have to do it. And then whether, and sometimes the lions lose. Sometimes they lose that fight against the porcupine. They, they run in there, they try to bite it, they get a face full of quills, and they're like, screw this, I'm done, I've had enough. And the porcupine wins a lot of the time. But even when the lion wins and eats the porcupine, it gets that same punishment. It, it gets a face full of quills. It's in pain for months afterward. It's scarred for life. And this is, this is such a fascinating analogy for, for fighters, I think. I was... Uh, use this as an analogy when people tell me like, yeah, I want to be a fighter. I'm like, do you really though? How hungry are you? You know, are you as hungry as a lion that hasn't eaten in a month, staring at a porcupine, trying to decide whether or not it wants to, it wants to chase that meal. I don't know. How hungry are you? <laughs>